so today's video is all about foods I avoid on my diet. So diet, healthy lifestyle, fitness journey, whatever you want to call it, but just for argument's sake, I am just calling it diet today. So a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about are maybe things you didn't know I avoid. I'm going to kind of skip like the junk food, you know, I don't eat chips, I don't eat candy, you know, that kind of stuff because you probably already know that, that I do try to eat as healthy as I can during the week with one cheat day on Saturday. I personally do take a cheat day. I cheat the entire day. And some of the things I mentioned in this video, I will have on cheat day. And then some things I completely cut out. So I will let you know if I do have this on cheat day or if I just completely cut it out permanently. So yeah, and before we get into this video, anything I mention, if you have that in your diet, that is totally fine. You know, don't take what I say and be like, oh no, like, but I like that. You know, pick your evils. That's basically what I want to say in this video. Pick your evils. I have things in my diet, you know, I use a lot of salt when I'm cooking, you know, I do things that are not like the perfect way, but I'm just saying the majority of the things I have, I think are healthy. And I do try to watch what I'm eating as best that I can. And like I said, I pick my evils. I cook with a lot of salt. So in turn, I don't have, and you'll see that in this video. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. This was highly requested by you guys. So let's get started. So number one on my list is smoothies and fruit juice. Now, the exception here is if you're making this stuff at your own house and you know, you know, you're putting a cup of Greek yogurt in your smoothie and you know, you're grinding up your fruit and then you're drinking it, that's fine. Same thing goes for fruit, you know. If you're grinding up your own fruit and making juice out of that, that's fine. But you know, the smoothies at my gym, they're pure sugar. You know, the smoothies at Starbucks, the, the smoothies at, you know, wherever, that's all sugar. A few people in my family do those fruit cleanse, no, uh, juice cleanse diets and they get this fruit in the mix. Honestly, you don't even need to do that. If you want to have an apple, have an apple. If you want to grind up your apple and make homemade apple juice, then do that. You know, if you want to make a smoothie and add a little ice and, you know, yogurt, then do that. But make it at your own house so that you know exactly what's going into it. Smoothies at my gym, for example. I don't mean to be rude to my gym, but I'm not drinking their smoothies. One time I asked to see the ingredients list and there's a ton of sugar that they add into it. There's a ton of syrups that they add into it. They want it to taste like a milkshake. They want it to taste good so that people keep coming back for more. And the thing is, it kind of sucks because if you're having that, here you are thinking you're doing something good for your body. You think, you know, I'm having this smoothie after my workout. I'm feeling great and, you know, I'm doing the right thing. But they've commercialized everything. So, you know, if you do enjoy the taste of this, like, you know, really sugary smoothie, then have it on cheat day. Cause um, trust me, I don't eat good on cheat day at all. Number two on my list are lattes, macchiatos, anything like that from Starbucks, from Dunkin', from your local, you know, coffee shop. I make my coffee myself all throughout the week. If I do feel like getting something from Dunkin' or getting something from Starbucks, which is usually, usually once or twice a week, usually more on the one side though, I'll get either an iced black coffee or I get a iced coffee with almond milk. Do you know what's in those macchiatos? Because I have no idea. I don't know what's in a latte. I don't know what's in a macchiato. So that's kind of my whole point. We don't know what they're putting in there. Once I read the nutritional facts on like a, ma a caramel macchiato, which is my personal favorite guilty pleasure from Starbucks, it has like 250 calories. And this is like the smallest size. And it has, you know, like, 50 grams of sugar or something like that, you could throw off your entire diet having a drink. So it's not even your meal. It's not even doing something good for you where, you know, it's the sugary food, but it also has protein and nutrition. No, you know, it's doing nothing for you except making you all like sugar crazy and then possibly even making you crave something salty after. So yeah, I mean, I just kind of stay away from that stuff. I'm not saying I make coffee the healthiest way, you know, I do like to have creamer sometimes. I do like to have a little bit of half and half, but at least I know how much I'm putting in. The next I have are granola bars and cereal. So if you're going to make these things yourself, and the reason why I say that is there is a farm by my mom's house that makes their own granola, and it tastes nothing like store-bought granola. You know, it's not sweet. It almost has like a bitter taste. It's very healthy. It's in its rawest form. It's not, you know, filled with chocolate and sugar and you know whatever who knows what else 
So you get what I'm saying. So if you are that person that you make it yourself, that's one thing. But this is something that I do try to stay away from, even on cheat day, because I was someone I loved cereal and milk. Oh, those were my favorite things. I could sit in front of the TV and just have a big bowl. Loved all those sugary cereals. So you're having all that sugar, you're having all the carbs, you know, it's just too much and it's not doing anything for you. It's not really providing any nutritional value except maybe the protein in milk. And the same thing goes with granola. Once again, if you're going to make it yourself, that's one thing, but store-bought granola, I don't add that into my yogurt like I used to. I just not really seeing the nutritional value for as much sugar and carbs as you're getting. The next thing on my list is milk. I do want to kind of touch on this a little bit because I know I have cheese and I know I have half and half and I know that there's a little bit of milk product in coffee creamer. So I just want to say it's not that I'm cutting out dairy completely. It's that I'm cutting out whole milk, skim milk, all of that. The reason being is milk is just pumped with hormones. It's really hard to get your hands on like good hearty milk. And even if you could get your hands on like farm to table milk, it was explained to me by my chiropractor is that milk is for babies. So when we're drinking baby milk, pretty much, we're getting all these hormones and all these things that we don't need as an adult. Milk can cause a lot of inflammation. It can cause acne. I do still have yogurt. I do still have cheese and that kind of stuff, but I don't drink milk anymore. And that's not something I'm going to do on cheat day. That's not something I'm going to do ever. It's just milk. It's just no more to me. The next thing on my list are fake diet foods. So I used to be a big fan of 100 calorie pack snacks. You probably see that in my older videos. And there was a time, this was before my current fitness journey, but back in high school when I tried eating healthy, I would have those, what are they called? Skinny cow, like ice cream desserts. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. 100 calorie pack snacks, any of these like, you know, skinny this, I don't have any of that. Those things, even though they're made with Splenda or Stevia or anything like that, they still increase your blood sugar and give you that insulin spike. So even though you're not exactly having a simple sugar, your body doesn't know that and your body thinks, oh no, I'm having ice cream, this is bad. Those things could also, once again, make you break out. You just might not get the total body transformation that you're looking for if you have those into your diet. And me personally, they make me crave the real thing. It's like once I have this fake ice cream, I want the real ice cream. So that's another thing. So while we're talking about fake foods and that kind of stuff, it brings me to my next point and that's protein bars and protein shakes. So I do have protein bars in moderation. I used to have protein shakes in moderation. Now I don't have protein shakes at anymore at all because they are starting to bother my stomach. So I cut those out. Protein bars now, I kind of started up again when I started doing intermittent fasting because I would just need something quick if I'm out and about and it's time to eat but I'm not home yet. So I did start having protein bars. So the ones that I started having are the Quest bars because I saw that they were low in sugar. So that's why I chose Quest. They really don't taste all that good. Um, I know people like die over Quest bars like, yay yeah, Quest bars, but I did not see the hype at all, aside from the fact that they are low in sugar and a lot of these protein bars, and that's what I'm talking about, are just filled with sugars. They're just like eating a Snickers bar or something. I will have one Quest bar a week, maybe, maybe not. So it's not like I'm having a Quest bar every single day, but if I am gonna have a protein bar, those are the ones I choose because they are much lower in sugar and I feel that you know, like I said, Luna bars, all these other kind of bars, they're so sugary and there's so much carbs and then there's not all that much protein in them. So you're really not getting that much, I don't know, nutritional value again. <laughs> I feel like I need to start using some different words. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you guys like to avoid on your diets, your healthy lifestyle, your fit journey, whatever you personally call it, Leave it down below because I would love to see what you guys avoid to hear. I would love to kind of compare notes, I guess, like, because that's what this is. This is a whole community for us to, yeah, pretty much compare notes and talk about what we do in place of that. You know, if you give up chips, what do you have that kind of reminds you of chips? You know, if you give up this, what reminds you of that so that you don't feel like you need to indulge in that fake stuff, that fake 100 calorie pack snack, that fake ice cream, like all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I would love to know what you guys do. Leave all those comments down below and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.